Hey, Larkin Rhodes here out in glorious nature. Thought I'd do a quick video about a thing that comes up rather often, which is socialism and how often it is. And I wanted to talk about what socialism isn't because it's pretty much always misrepresented by its proponents. Now, the first way they misrepresent it is when you point at places where socialism or communism was tried, like they actually said, we're going to take the work of Karl Marx and Engels and put that into practice, Soviet Union and communist China, and the outcome is unimaginably horrendous, and people are starving to death in the tens of millions, and there's horrible oppression and tyranny all over the place. And of course, the modern socialists who fell for the line pointed that and go, ah, that doesn't really count. That wasn't real socialism. That wasn't real communism. And weirdly, having talked to a lot of them, it's suspicious to me how few of them seem at all concerned that that was the outcome of trying these ideas in the real world. And they don't even seem curious as to why. Like, oh, this fairness and equality of outcome and the workers own the means of production. And, oh, look, there's horrible oppression and people getting run over by tanks and Tens of millions of people starving to death and being oppressed and monitored and all manner of atrocity. Oh, well, they just didn't do it right or something. So the first side is they just pretend that, well, it's just coincidence or bad luck that every single time it's tried in the real world, the result is horrendous. North Korea, communist China, um, just all over the place. But there's another side to their dishonesty which is what they pretend is socialism when it's 100% not. For example, they sometimes like to pretend, oh, Jesus was a socialist. He's about helping the poor. Socialism is not about helping the poor. Now, socialism and communism are slightly different ways of describing what's essentially the same thing, which is collectivism. The short version is the individual doesn't matter. The collective matters. So if you have to sacrifice the rights of the individual for the good of the collective, then that's okay. In fact, it's necessary and righteous. Um, by the way, collectivism is not only the basis of what was in you know, Soviet Union and Red China and North Korea, it was also the basis of um, fascism and Nazi Germany which were also socialists. The Nazis were literally national social, socialists. Um, and they said the same things, which is that the individual doesn't really matter. He should be happy to sacrifice himself for the common good. That, that was the commonality for all of them. So people pretend that there's the extreme left and extreme right. They're just two very slightly different flavors of authoritarian collectivism. And if you actually look at the day-to-day -day lives in you know, Nazi Germany, which is far right, supposedly, and Soviet Russia, which is far left, supposedly. They're both just authoritarian psycho ruling classes bossing people around and, and robbing them and subjugating them. But the thing to understand when socialists pretend, oh, it's just about caring for people and taking care of the poor and helping the less fortunate, it's an absolute total stinking lie. Because if you go and earn a paycheck, you do some work, whatever it is, you earn money, you get money by voluntary means. You have a deal with somebody else, whether you're an employee or you make something and sell it. However, you get money as a result of voluntary exchange from people who want to trade with you, you own that. And this, almost all of this comes down to the concept of ownership. Ownership means the exclusive right to decide what is done with something. So if I own a car, it's mine. I get to decide whether to use it. I get to decide whether to let somebody else use it. I can trade it to somebody else and then it becomes theirs and whatever they give me becomes mine if I choose to. I can choose to light it on fire. I can choose to let it sit in the parking lot and never use it. It is my choice. Now, with that choice, I can decide to give my neighbor a ride to the supermarket. I can decide to loan it to somebody so they can go to the airport. To, I have the right to decide of my free will to let somebody use or even have 
that which is mine and then it's not mine anymore. Like if I'm walking down the street, oh, there's a poor person that seems down on their luck, I'm gonna give them a little bit of money. It's not mine anymore because I chose to give it to them. Socialism and communism is not at all that in any way, shape or form. If it's your choice, whether to help people and when to help people and how to help people, that by definition is not socialism. So when they point at actual charity and generosity and helping the less fortunate and claim that as socialism, they are lying through their stinking teeth because communism and socialism are based on the notion that your need entitles you to something. That ownership doesn't come from voluntary exchange or production or any of that, it comes from need. From each according to his ability, you have to produce what you're able to produce, to each according to his need. Whatever you need, you're entitled to. Well, anyone who's older than five should be able to think that through and say, well, wait a minute, who's gonna decide what people need? Because if we have a bunch of people and they're producing different stuff and like, wow, okay, I'm hungry, I need food. Okay, where, where do I get it? Like, if I produce food, that doesn't make it mine, according to communism, because what if somebody else needs it? So I have to go find the guy or the committee or the something that decides who needs what and say, I need a sandwich. Give me a sandwich. I'm entitled to it because I need it. Where's that central committee going to get it? Well, they're going to steal it from somebody else or they're going to force somebody else to make it for you. Socialism and communism are not based on generosity. They're based on entitlement and violence. Because if you're entitled to something because you need it, that means somebody else is obligated to make it for you. When people say people have a right to decent housing, well, okay, who has an obligation to build you a house? Because to say you have a right to a house that somebody else has to build, they don't just fall out of the sky, to say you have a right to it means somebody else has to give that to me. Why? And how are you gonna make that happen? And it, that comes down to everything. Well, people have a right to, to healthy food and drinking water. No, they don't. They have one right, which is to be left alone, to have other people not commit aggression against them. And then it's up to them to take care of themselves and other people. Other people can choose to let you live in their house or build you a house or help you build your own house or rent a room to you or whatever by means of voluntary exchange. But when the socialists and communists pretend that sharing equals socialism and communism, they're lying because sharing means you have the right to decide what is done with something and you choose to give some of what is yours, rightfully yours, to somebody else. That is generosity. That is charity. If it's not your choice, there's nothing noble about it. There's nothing generous about it. And what the socialists and communists want is credit for being generous by declaring that other people, not themselves, have an obligation to hand over wealth to whoever they say is the less fortunate. And the really ironic weird thing is how many American communists and socialists there are, especially like university age kids, who really don't know how to think. I'm compassionate and caring. Everyone should be equal and blah, blah, blah. The evil rich should, you are the evil rich. Compared to most of the world, you are ridiculously well off. Why aren't you giving away your stuff to a billion poor people in India, a billion poor people in China, however many poor people there are in Africa, which is huge, who all have way less than you? If their need entitles them to it while you're sitting on your butt typing on something and complaining about the evils of capitalism, why don't you sell that computer or that phone and whatever else you have and give it to the less fortunate? Because they never believe their own BS. Because there is nothing noble about it. There is nothing generous or charitable about it. There's no generosity in insisting that somebody else's stuff be given away. That's jealousy, that's envy, that's coveting. And when you advocate that it be taken from them because they have too much, that's not you being generous, that's be you being bitter and envious. And that is the foundation of socialism and communism, that people are entitled to the product of other people's efforts just for existing. 
Now, if you want to say, well, I don't want people to be starving. So if I'm doing well and I see somebody starving, I'm going to help them out. Good. That's generosity. If you're giving what is rightfully yours, but nothing is rightfully yours under communism. I mean, now communism, they come right out and say, we don't believe in private property. So it's not yours to begin with. Ownership is determined by need to each according to his need. You cannot generously give that which isn't yours. And under communism, nothing is yours. So even if you go, oh, here, my neighbor, have a sandwich. Well, if your neighbor's a communist, he's going to go, good, hand it over. You were oppressing me by having it in the first place, even if you made it, because I'm entitled to it because I need some lunch. That is the foundation of communism, and it's evil and insane. And when they point at actual generosity, which absolutely requires the concept of ownership and voluntary trade and capitalism, and I mean that term not as the corporo-fascist ridiculousness we have now, but what the term originally meant, which is private ownership of things based on lack of government intervention and voluntary exchange. That's what the word used to mean. Now, we can bicker about what the word means. Usually, I don't bother with that. I just say if somebody produces something on their own, it's theirs. And if they agree to trade with somebody else, okay, that's valid too. When there's coercion, that's when it stops being valid. And there will always be coercion in socialism and communism because it is based on the idea that if someone needs something, then somebody else is obligated to give it to them. So the whole foundation of the commie BS is that if somebody needs something and doesn't have it, then he's being oppressed by anyone who does have it. Even if that other person had nothing to do with them, it's like they're not the reason you don't have it. And this idea that, well, I'm entitled to a living wage from who? It's, it's a purely childish view. And I'll often like ask communists, Oh, you're entitled to a living wage. Okay, am I entitled to a living wage? Well, yeah. Okay, cool. Where's my job, Mr. Communist? Why aren't you giving me a job? You're oppressing me by not giving me a job. Well, I don't have to. Well, why the hell does that guy have to? He made a business. He created jobs. He trades with people. And all of a sudden, because he was able to do that, you think you're entitled to a job from him because he bothered to be productive. Meanwhile, you're sitting on your butt whining about your entitlement crap. You're not giving anybody anything, but somehow that's not oppression. So somebody offering me a deal that I can say no to, I can say, yeah, I'll work for you. No, I don't want that deal. Or yeah, I'll buy something from you. Or no, I don't want to. Somehow that's oppressing me. But you, Mr. Communist, offering me nothing, offering no trade, no job, no anything, you're not oppressing me? Like, all that guy was add an option. It might be a crappy option, and they might say, I don't want your crappy option. But all he did was add another option for me. You didn't even do that. So, Mr. Communist, why is it that I'm entitled to a living wage from that guy just because he was productive? It's because they believe in from each according to his ability. If you're able to do something, you are, according to them, obligated to do it, but not to benefit from it. Other people's need means they're the ones who benefit from your effort. There's a word for these people benefit from these people's effort without their consent. That word is slavery. The foundation of socialism and communism is slavery. And when these clueless people are out there pushing slavery and then pointing to people being generous and helping other people out and go, see, that's what we want. No, it's not. It's the exact opposite. Actual generosity requires a respect for ownership and self-ownership, that what somebody produces on their own is theirs unless and until they decide to trade with somebody else or voluntarily give it to somebody else or in some other way do something consensual with other people. Without that, there is no humanity. There is no civilization. There is no morality and this is why I say communism and socialism, even though they're pitched as these progressive philosophies, they are the philosophies of cockroaches and sewer rats, which is if I need something, I must be entitled to it. And if I'm entitled to it, it's rightfully mine. And if it's rightfully mine, I'm justified in doing whatever I have to do to get it 
from whoever I see who has it. That's how cockroaches and sewer rats think. And it's how people who pretend to be generous and caring think when they want to be entitled to other people's stuff and conspicuously they never feel obligated to give the stuff they have to the people who have less than them. They sort of leave that part out because it has nothing to do with fairness or generosity or compassion. It just has to do with, I want free stuff because I'm an entitled child and I'm gonna whine at anybody who is successful as a result of their own effort and talk as if I'm entitled. And if anybody comes along and points out, there's several billion people who have way less than you. Well, that doesn't count. They, like what I have, I need. What I have is rightfully mine. I'm the sewer rat, you know, with this little pile of stuff. It's mine and I'm gonna bite anybody who tries to take it. Meanwhile, I'm trying to steal that guy's stuff. That is socialism and communism. And however many layers of euphemism they try to hide it under, and however many times they try to pretend it has anything to do with sharing and generosity or anything noble, that is and will always be a lie. Socialism and communism are inherently anti-human and violent and anti-charity and anti-freedom and anti-justice. And ironically, I'll end with this, the way to get closest to the utopia that the collectivists describe is an unflinching, absolute adherence to the concept of private property because it allows us to get so prosperous that we have so much that when there is someone in need, we can voluntarily help them out, which Americans already do to the tune of billions and billions of dollars so that our poor, none of them are starving to death. Most of them have widescreen TVs and cars and cell phones and stuff as if that's poor. It is prosperity that allows for that level of actual genu generosity and charity, and you cannot ever get to that prosperity unless there is the concept of private property, that what I produce is mine unless and until I choose to trade with somebody else. So if you want to get to the utopia described by the communists and socialists, the closest way to get there is go the exact opposite direction. And the commies and socialists will never acknowledge that because they always view themselves as the ones entitled to what other people produce. And they never view themselves as the ones obligated to be the ones producing anything.